full text free, 1v1, sweet pet, saying that the cannon fodder female lead is destined to have no good ending. Lan Shuang said that it is not certain who is cannon fodder. Due to the heavy resentment of the tragic death of the female supporting role, which affected the balance of the 3000 worlds, Lan Shuang, as a senior taskmaster of the Time and Space Management Bureau, volunteered to participate, shuttle back and forth, save the cannon fodder female supporting role, and eliminate their resentment. The legitimate daughter of the Duke of China was transferred, and when she returned, her father complained that her mother didn't love her and only recognized her as the White Lotus sister. Lan Shuang said, I'm sorry, Regent Princess, you can't climb high. A wealthy family's daughter goes crazy for love and ends in depression. Lan Shuang said, Goodbye, goodbye, the next one will be even better. When the popular little flower serves as a stepping stone for love, the female protagonist steps on her to ascend, and she sleeps and flies with the actor. Lan Shuang Garbage needs to be sorted, and the queen's sister is beautiful. Lan Shuang is crazily completing tasks, enjoying a great life, while striving to get rid of the clingy fairy following behind her. He looked at her with hunger and thirst, hugging her wildly and passionately, wishing he could melt her into his own flesh and blood and carry her with him at any time. Jiang Lushing said, if dew grows, frost will form, if frost dies, dew will perish. We are destined to be inseparable. The stone is cold and frosty, and the river is cold and white with dew. P.S. I made up the latter half of the sentence, it's not a poem, right? Key words of the novel. Fast-wearing female supporting. Sick and delicious, he is both Sue and flirtatious without a pop-dot-up window. Fast-wearing female supporting. Sick and delicious, he is both Sue and flirtatious. Download the full text. Fast-wearing female supporting. Sick and delicious, he is both Sue and flirtatious. Latest chapter reading. Chapter 1 World 1 Your Highness, please respect yourself. You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 1 World 1 Your Highness, please respect yourself, Duke, Madam, it's not good. The Ming King is coming to welcome the wedding. The servant wearing red silk shouted and ran as he shouted, turning the faces of everyone in the hall white with a loud voice. It didn't look like a married woman, but rather like a funeral. What should we do? The auspicious time will arrive soon, but the young lady hasn't been seen yet. Xin Yang anxiously turned around. Damn it! If you ask me, I shouldn't have brought her back and raised her in the manner. She doesn't understand anything. At this time, if she leaves, what will happen to hundreds of lives in our British mansion? The Duchess of England was holding a small handkerchief and crying, tears streaming down her nose. The British Duke sat next to her, already annoyed, and even more infuriated when he heard her cry. He grabbed the celadone cup on the table and smashed it into pieces, saying, cry and cry. You know how to cry. It's useless. He stood up and said to the servant outside, hurry up and find her. If you want to see someone alive or die, you need to see a corpse. Even if you want to lift her today, you have to lift her into the bridal sedan chair for me. Miss Eyre, who was watching the farce with a cold eye on one side, stood up and knelt down straight, holding up her skirt. She was so frightened that the British Duchess quickly reached out to help her, saying, Rain Ning, what are you doing? Lan Yuning straightened her spine and said calmly, Mother, Father, things are urgent and we should take power. Since my sister refuses to show her face, there must be an explanation from the Ming King and the Emperor that my daughter is willing to marry on her behalf. I hope my parents can fulfill this. As soon as Lan Shuang walked to the door, she heard her powerful words and couldn't help but laugh. She was truly the female lead with a rebirth script in her hand and knew how to seize opportunities. She came from the side and hasn't entered yet. Coupled with Lan Yuning's appearance, no one noticed her. Lan Shuang's brother, Lan Chuanxiu, looked concerned and went to help Lan Yuning. His handsome face was full of heartache, Yuning, get up. 
marriage is not a child's play, how can we let you jump into that fire pit? Ming Wang is lame and ruthless, he doesn't deserve you at all. Lan Xuan. Dot. Oh, fake sister can't go, can you just find your own biological sister? She looked up at the sky speechlessly and pressed her heart, where there was still a trace of resentment from the original owner. Listening to this unlucky thing's words made her feel heartbroken. Big brother, there's no other choice now. Sister doesn't want it, there will always be someone to take it on. You have shown me great kindness, so let me repay you today. As she spoke, two lines of clear tears fell on Lan Yuning's delicate little face, which was truly pitiful. Since that's the case. The Duke of England was slightly moved, then you can go and exchange it. Wait a minute. As they continued talking about this matter, Lan Shuang stood up and interrupted them. Who said I don't want to? Lan Shuang strode into the front hall, and everyone looked at her with a ghostly expression. After being surprised, the British Duke pointed angrily at her and said, You, you, you. Did you roll around in the beggar's pile? What kind of filth is this? Lan Chuanxiu covered her mouth and nose with her sleeve in disgust and said, I'm afraid she went to fetch feces. Those who grew up in the village are doing some dirty work. You dead girl, do you still have the face to come back? The Duchess of England rushed over and swung her arm wide, wanting to slap her. Lan Chuan raised her hand to catch it, then shook it away with a stern expression in her eyes. Try moving me again. I am the princess of Ming Wang who has not yet passed. If you hit me, it would be the following offense. You. Everyone widened their eyes and looked at her incredulously, as if they didn't recognize her. Lan Yu's gaze flickered slightly, his eyebrows furrowed tightly. What's wrong with this person? Why is it different from the previous life? Sister, you're not. Lan Yuning hesitated and pondered, if Ming Wang finds out, it might be detrimental to you. Her words were vague, but everyone present immediately understood, and the gaze towards Lan Shuang once again became contemptuous. Lan Shuang sneered in her heart, her mouth really powerful. She glanced at Lan Yuning and said in a deep voice, What do I do? It's up to the prince to decide. If the prince is not satisfied, I will apologize to death and not implicate you. Can. What else did Lan Yuning want to say? Lan Shuang impatiently urged, What are you waiting for? The prince is still waiting outside with the wedding procession, letting people know how big the British government is. The British public's face changed several times before finally waving his hand and saying, Take her down to tidy up and change clothes, and go out as soon as possible. Yes. Xin Yang and the maids gathered around and walked out with Lan Xuan. Lan Yuning gritted her teeth and followed up, I'll go see my sister. Lan Xuan's small courtyard can be said to be the most remote and dilapidated in the entire Guogong mansion, but she is not in the mood to pay attention to it at the moment. Anyway, she will not come back in the future. What kind of love it is. The servants brought buckets of water over and were almost ready. The maid stood by with handkerchiefs and petals, waiting. Lan Xuan waved her hand and said, No need, you guys go down, I'll do it myself. Yes. The room was cleared, and Lan Xuan took off her stinky clothes and stepped into the bathtub, sighing comfortably. Xiao Ba Ba, pass me the details of the plot. System 888. A good host. A long and unfamiliar memory flooded into her mind. Lan Shuang closed her eyes and digested it for a while. Dad doesn't hurt or mom doesn't love it. Finding it back is just a small cabbage, tsk tsk tsk, it's so miserable. As a senior taskmaster, Lan Shuang's mission this time is to save the cannon fodder female support and eliminate their grievances. The original owner of this body is the target of her world. The newly recognized true daughter of the British government who has been wandering outside. In the previous life, it was on the day of the wedding that the original protagonist fled and got married under the design and framing of Lan Yuning, who had been reborn. 
this led to a series of tragedies that followed. On the contrary, the female protagonist got married for her and had a smooth journey, becoming the queen and enjoying all the glory and wealth. How can the original owner not hate this? Now that she has arrived, she will never give the female director a chance to step on her position. Dong Dong The sudden knocking on the door interrupted her train of thought. Sister, may I come in? Lan Yuning's gentle and gentle voice rang from outside the door. Lan Xuan raised her eyebrows and said, Speak of Chao Chao, Chao Chao is here. She looked at her reflection in the water, her face washed away dust and cowardice, but it was really beautiful. She curved her lips and smiled at herself in the water, saying directly, No way. Lan Yuning. Dot. After a moment of silence, she persisted, but I'm really worried about you. Didn't you say you're eloping with Lu Lang? I finally created an opportunity for you. We talked so well, why did you suddenly come back? TSK, is this worrying about her? Are you clearly worried about your plan being exposed? Lan Xuan lifted the water and splashed it on her curd-like skin, casually saying, Ah, I have changed my mind, can't I? You. Lan Yuning almost couldn't control her tone, but Ming Wang is cruel and lustful. If you marry him, you will only have a dead end. I can't bear it. Lan Shuang sneered, so you think you're lucky enough to marry someone and not die? Of course I. Lan Yuning was startled and almost bit her tongue. What are you? Lan Shuang deliberately induced her. It's nothing. You, it's easy to wash. Lan Yuning glanced deeply at the door panel and left with a heavy heart. She is afraid that if she stays any longer and shows her horse's feet, it will not be worth the loss. Lan Shuang listened to the footsteps and let out a light smile, then grabbed her long hair and carefully scrubbed it. She tidied herself up and called in the maids. A group of people gathered around her, beating and beating, and she was completely transformed. In a hurry, Lan Shuang didn't even see what she looked like wearing a phoenix crown and xia pei, so she stuffed a fan into her hand and pushed it out of the door. Divide Line's New Book Consumption Guide 1. This story is purely fictional, and if there are any similarities, it is purely coincidental. Don't focus on logic, try to be as reasonable as possible. If you make a mistake in your writing, you can change it. If you can't change it, everyone can bear it. 2. Update in the early morning, 2 chapters per day, constantly updating. Leave will be announced in advance, so rest assured to enter the pit. 3. Regarding citations, they will be written in the text or in the author's words, without labels either because they are too familiar or because they were written by me, including but not limited to poetic sentences, lyrics. 4. Welcome and appreciate Catch the Worm, do not welcome writing guidance, just finish reading, do not like to write on your own, thank you, do not need to guide me, do not welcome all kinds of criticism, including but not limited to the fictional world must be entangled in how ancient times. Also do not welcome KY, see and delete one by one, respect you, me, and others, thank you. 5. Comment Management, Reasonable Suggestions for Retaining Comments, Deleting Messy Comments Without Explanation, Nitpicking Based on the Severity of the Situation, and Normal Comments Will Not Be Deleted by Samsung. Thank you for your understanding. 6. Please check in and vote for comments. The free period is very important for our PK that's all the nonsense, thank you for reading let me emphasize again, this is 1v1. The male and female leads are always one person. There are no other male leads. Not falling in love with someone else. The male lead's identity is revealed slowly, but every world is his. End of this chapter. Chapter 2 Prince, please respect yourself too. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 2 Prince, please respect yourself too when going out, not a single person from the British government came out to see her off, only a maid named Bai Qing from Lan Shuang, who helped her out in a whimsical manner. At the entrance, there were many people gathered to watch the excitement. 
One is the infamous disabled prince, and the other is a rough young lady who has just been found. These two people are both topics of conversation for the people of Kyoto after their leisure time. The emperor issued a decree binding the two together, and it is unknown who they are insulting. And there's also something special today by Qing helped Lan Shuang down the stairs and was dumbfounded. She looked at the pitch black sedan in front of her and couldn't help but cry even louder. You. You bully people too much. How could anyone get married in a black sedan chair? Woo woo. Miss, my poor Mississippi. Ming Wang didn't know what he was thinking, so he specially used a pure black sedan chair. Coupled with the spacious sedan chair, it looked not like a sedan chair from a distance, but rather like a coffin. The several black-clad guards by the sedan chair all lowered their faces and said, Bold. How dare the little maid speak wildly. Be Ching, be cautious when you speak, Lan Shuang said as she struggled with her neck and wanted to say something by Ching looked at her unwillingly and brewed a burst of tears. However, Lan Shuang let go of her hand and walked towards the bridal sedan chair, saying, Bai Qing's words and actions are impeccable. I have offended the prince, please forgive me. She paused for a moment, her gaze swept over the hanging curtain of the sedan chair, and smiled, saying, I think this sedan chair is very refined. The masked man sitting in a wheelchair in the sedan chair suddenly opened his eyes upon hearing this, and a ripple appeared in his deep, ancient pond-like eyes. How is this person's temperament different from what the dark guards investigated? Without waiting for him to ponder, a fair and delicate hand opened the sedan curtain, allowing the sunlight outside to pour down. Prince, it's a pleasure to meet you. Lan Shuang put down her fan and smiled at him, her phoenix crown shining brightly, making her lips red and teeth white, affectionate and affectionate. Ming Wang exchanged a glance with her and calmly rubbed the purple jade ring on his thumb, nice to meet you. May I come in now? Lan Shuang asked politely. Ming Wang was stunned for a moment, then nodded respectfully and said, sure. As the words fell, Lan Shuang walked in with a foot wearing red embroidered shoes. However, before it landed, she heard someone outside shouting, wait a moment, sister. This pretentious voice, without looking at it, can be inferred to come from her petite, good sister. Lan Shuang's face collapsed and she couldn't resist rolling her eyes in front of Ming Wang. Ming Wang. Dot. He fixed his gaze on Lan Shuang and then learned what it means to change his face. The footsteps of Lan Yuning gradually approached, and Lan Shuang withdrew her other foot, but did not put down her hand. She turned around and put on a smiling face, saying, Is there anything else sister needs to do? Lan Yuning immediately found a good angle to ensure that she could see inside and also let the people inside see her. Then, reluctantly holding Lan Shuang's other hand, she said softly, Sister, you should take good care of yourself when you go to the prince's mansion in the future. Even if you have had many misunderstandings about the prince before, now. She glanced into the sedan chair as she spoke, and Lan Shuang immediately let go of her hand, causing the sedan curtain to fall and block her. Lan Yuning. Dot. She was just about to send a subtle and affectionate message. Ming Wang. Dot. She doesn't want others to see her. Why? Lan Shuang smiled and broke free from Lan Yuning's hand, while the acacia fan partially covered her lotus face. She said casually, Sister, you're joking. That's all from the past. Now that I'm married to the prince, he's the wife of the prince. Naturally, everything is more important to the prince. These shouldn't be what you, a young lady in the boudoir, should worry about. Go back. Lan Yuning didn't give up and said, Sister, you should come back and see more in the future. Although you have offended your parents today, you are still a family. Lan Shuang ran out of patience and turned to ask the most prominent one among the guards, Brother, is the auspicious time coming? It's time to blow and fight, go quickly. The commander of the guards, Yu Shao, was confused for a moment. He looked up at the sky and waved his hand, get up the sedan chair. 
Lan Shuang immediately smiled happily, lifted the sedan curtain, and crawled in. She sat on one side with great propriety, not touching the Ming King. The sedan chair was lifted up, and a group of black-clad guards silently strode forward. The musicians following behind glanced at each other and started playing gongs and drums in a dragon-like motion. The person at the back also set off firecrackers. Whether or not to say it, it looks more like a funeral. Lan Yuning was completely ignored, standing awkwardly in place at a loss. In fact, she was not the only one who was embarrassed, and Lan Shuang in the sedan chair was also quite awkward, but she didn't say anything. Who knows the taste of being in a small sedan chair with a stranger and not even talking. She knew even without looking that Ming Wang was looking at her, and her gaze was too oppressive, leaving her nowhere to hide. I thought you wouldn't want them to play around. After a while, Ming Wang finally spoke up, his voice surprisingly pleasant. Like a clear spring stone flowing upstream, or like a jade water merging, with a hint of coldness in its clarity. Lan Shuang is a voice controller, and after listening, her liking for Ming Wang increases sharply. Why not? We're out of the sea of suffering, can't we celebrate? Lan Shuang smiled and glanced at him, directly fanning with a fan of acacia. At this time, it was September 8 and she was wearing one layer on the left and one layer on the right, which was very hot. Oh! Ming Wang became interested and rested his hand on the armrest of the wheelchair, looking at her calmly. So, do you think marrying me is a good thing? Hmm, yes, Lan Shuang nodded. But how did I hear that you ran away from marriage and eloped with someone named Lu Lang? The tone of Ming Wang remained unchanged, clear and cold, but it made Lan Shuang's heart sound an alarm. She paused her hand and squeezed the acacia fan with a slight force. Her phoenix eyes narrowed slightly and she said, How could the prince be so well informed? Isn't it true that the prince is just a playboy who eats, drinks, and plays? The corners of Ming Wang's eyes seemed to have a smile, but his face clearly had no expression. So, do you think I leaked the secret to you? Lan Shuang silently moved towards the direction of the sedan door, only to find that it stimulated Ming Wang. He was like a wolf watching its prey run away, and suddenly caught the opportunity. He grabbed Lan Shuang's wrist with one hand, pulled the person into his arms, and tightly grabbed her neck with the other hand. Lan Shuang had difficulty breathing. She threw away the fan and held on to Ming Wang's finger, saying, We have something to say. On the first day of our wedding, we cough 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 cough. Wouldn't it be good to strangle our wife? Ming Wang chuckled low, and the heat in his breath stirred Lan Shuang's neck, instantly staining it with a layer of crimson. I don't like to leave dangerous people or things by my side. Who knows if one day I'll bite back. He added some strength to his hands as he spoke. Lan Shuang. You really have principles. Ming Wang sneered and saw a murderous intent in his eyes. 888 quickly jumped out and said, realizing that the host's life is at risk, immediately activate the counterattack mechanism. Vigorously perform miracles. Lan Shuang. Dot. What the hell is that? Pushing books Jun Huijin ascended the throne for nine years, at the age of seventeen. Not only were the ministers dissatisfied, but the people also had many criticisms. However, due to her family being emperors, no one dared to say anything wrong. In order to prove herself, Jun Huijin decided to visit and fish privately in her humble clothes. Then. The lord of Zhoucheng has rebelled, the people in the martial arts world have drifted away, and even the prince has rebelled and picked up his big sword. Jun Huijin. There are always troublemakers trying to harm me. Can this be tolerated? Asterisk Jun Huijin disguised herself as a man and began to unravel the truth, but unexpectedly got closer and closer to a courtesan. The flower leader's phoenix eyes hooked and said, The purpose is the same, form an alliance. Jun Huijin stared at his face and said, Not. The case is over, and the fog is still lingering. 
The flower leader's thin lips parted slightly and said, it's difficult to support a single tree, be a companion. Jun Huaiji nodded and said, do it. Water falls and rocks emerge, and danger lurks everywhere. The flower leader sighed and said, we are destined, can we be honest? Jun Huaijin pursed her lips and said, actually, I'm a woman. The flower leader smiled and said, coincidentally, I'm a man. He bullied himself and whispered in his ear, no coincidence can make a book. Why don't you just follow? Asterisk the deep and decaying diseases are hard to dispel, and the floating clouds cover the sun, making it impossible to overlook them. However, once a dragon emerged from the water, and the sound of the wind broke through the nine skies. End of this chapter Chapter 3 Prince, please respect yourself 3. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 3 Prince, please respect yourself 3 As the system voice fell, Wan Shuang only felt that her body had undergone some subtle changes, and her arms suddenly became full of strength. Her eyes trembled, and she grabbed Ming Wang's finger and forcefully pushed it back. Hiss. Ming Wang's fingers were sore and he couldn't help but relax his strength. He was caught by Lan Shuang and she flipped over to distance herself from Ming Wang, unwilling to accept it. She planned to teach Ming Wang a lesson. I had no intention of being enemies with you, but you wanted my life too much, right? She lifted one leg and pressed it against Ming Wang's thigh. Ming Wang suddenly felt the Jade Mountain collapse, making him unable to move. This was not over yet. Lan Shuang clenched Ming Wang's wrist, overlapping his hands and pressing them tightly against the wooden board behind him. You. Ming Wang looked at her in shock. A woman, how could she have such great strength? How could he not make it? Lan Shuang leaned down and looked at him. The distance between the two was extremely close and ambiguous. If she is lower and Ming Wang is higher, they can kiss together. Their breaths intertwined, making it difficult to part ways. Lan Shuang moved her neck and said, Your hands are so ruthless, don't you understand what it means to cherish fragrance and jade? Ming Wang's eyes narrowed slightly, his lips pursed silently, but his killing intent did not dissipate. I'll tell you seriously, it's not too late for you to consider taking action after I finish speaking. Lan Shuang lowered her head and stared at him. After a moment of silence, Ming Wang whispered, Get off me first. No way, if I get up, what will you do if you take the opportunity to sneak attack me again? In terms of martial arts, I can't compare to you, so I can only wrongly treat you for a while. Lan Shuang looked at him with a smile, like a fox. First of all, my relationship with the British government is very bad. In the future, you should have checked and found out that I am not lying. Secondly, marrying you is a matter of helplessness, which is the Emperor's intention, but it does not mean that we are on the same boat. If you are willing, perhaps we can help each other cover up. Thirdly, I don't care about what you want to do. I only have one request. After the task is completed, you give me a, he leaked book, let me go far away, and pretend to be dead. From then on, the bridge will return to the bridge, the road will return to the road, and we will have no further connection. After speaking, she pressed her thumb on Ming Wang's wrist and said, how about it? Think about it. Ming Wang sneered, if I don't consider it, there are all my people outside. What do you think you have done to me and can still run away? Your conditions can be met by anyone, not just you. At this point, he was not in a hurry anymore. He relaxed completely, with a hint of laziness and decadence in the corners of his eyes and eyebrows, as if everything was under control and not worth the trouble. Lan Shuang nodded and said, Well, what you said makes sense, but... She slowly moved her knee amidst the ambiguous gaze of the Ming King, and finally pressed against something. Do you think there is still room for negotiation now? Do you think your dark guards are faster, or am I faster? The veins on Ming Wang's forehead jumped suddenly, and his hands clenched tightly. Roll down. No way. She turned her head with a smile and said, How's it going? 
Does the prince want to consider it this time? Ming Wang tried to struggle, but Lan Shuang pressed even harder, suppressing him tightly. Don't waste your energy, be careful not to hurt yourself, he said she lowered her gaze with a hint of meaning, and then, prince. You really are. She slowly swallowed her words in the eyes of the Ming King, who seemed to be devouring people. This time, Ming Wang not only had his veins jumping, but also his seven orifices were smoking. This woman is very different from what he found out. If it weren't for the fact that she didn't wear a human skin mask after just looking at it for a while, he would have suspected that she had been swapped. Has she been pretending to be a pig and eating tigers for so many years? That thought is too deep in the city. Upon this thought, Ming Wang felt that he couldn't keep this person, but he was currently at a disadvantage and couldn't easily turn his back. Since she can say those three points, at least she doesn't plan to be enemies with herself for the time being. Why don't she stay and take a look? Ming Wang's heart was full of twists and turns, and finally he had an idea. His emotions gradually calmed down. He slightly raised his chin, his eyes darkened, his killing intent restrained, but instead showed a hint of playfulness. I believe you once entered the Ming Prince's mansion, and we each lived separately. If I were to know that you had any irregular little moves, I would definitely kill you. Although there was a smile in her eyes, Lan Shuang knew he was serious, but she was not worried. A word spoken by the eldest husband is unforgettable, and I believe you once. As she spoke, she let go of King Ming's hand and slowly stood up straight, with her legs tucked back. She sat back and leaned steadily against the edge of the sedan chair, picking up the fan and slowly fanning it. 888, the host's danger has been resolved, and the miracle of might skill has been reclaimed. Lan Shuang didn't take it seriously and said, Don't worry, Prince. I'm a very good breadwinner. Three times a day, what are you doing? Halfway through the conversation, Lan Shuang was suddenly grabbed by Ming Wang's ankle, and she forcefully pulled the person over. She threw herself into Ming Wang's arms in a very awkward posture. In a state of urgency, Lan Shuang was too flustered and accidentally uttered a foul word. Ming Wang looked at her with a smile on his face, three in a day. Shut up. Lan Shuang became angry and embarrassed, struggling to stop Ming Wang's mouth. But this time, Ming Wang learned a lesson and didn't give her time to take action. She took out a handkerchief from her arms and tied her slender wrist together behind her. Reciprocity, no need to thank you. After tying it up, Ming Wang reached out and pushed Lan Shuang aside, feeling very happy. The phoenix crown on Lan Shuang's head swayed wildly, and the red jade hung down on her eyebrows, adding a touch of charming beauty. She gritted her teeth and looked at Ming Wang, you have such a vengeful nature. Ming Wang stroked his sleeve, his thin lips parted slightly, revealing his dense white teeth and saying, this is each other. Lan Shuang was speechless, and she had a new understanding of the Ming King. He is unpredictable in joy and anger, always seeking revenge. He has excellent martial arts skills and a deep mind. In short, it's not easy to provoke. In the future, when she enters the palace, she will stay away from him. Anyway, her task is to live a good life and change the tragic life. She didn't say she wanted to have any extraordinary love with this Ming Wang, so let this dog man crawl. After making up her mind, Lan Shuang never said a redundant word to Ming Wang again. At the moment the sedan chair landed, she breathed a sigh of relief and quickly sat up straight. Ming Wang saw her with a stiff face, probably angry. After thinking about how bad it would be to see her continue like this, he reached out his hand and said, Come over here, I'll untie you. Unexpectedly, Lan Shuang just chuckled and didn't even look at him. She got up and got off the sedan chair. What about the sedan curtain? Oh, she opened it with her head. Yu Xiao, who was hesitating outside whether to lift the sedan curtain or not, said, What? The numb Ming Wang inside said, Dot. Lan Shuang saw Xiao blocking in front and lifted her chin, saying, Please make way. 
Oh oh, Yu Xiao quickly stepped aside and Lan Shuang strode out, saying to Bai Qing who was walking with the sedan chair, let's go. A bright and elegant beauty, she forcefully stepped out of the footsteps of bandits vying for marriage. Ming Wang watched from behind and couldn't help but stroke his forehead, feeling that the days ahead could not be stopped. Request tickets, clock in, leave a message, let me see your hands, end of this chapter. Chapter 4 Prince, please respect yourself for You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 4 Prince, please respect yourself for Lan Shuang climbed the stairs and walked to the entrance of the Wang Mansion. The guards immediately put down their spears and blocked her with an indifferent expression. Lan Shuang said, I am the princess who was personally welcomed by your Ming Wang. Stop me. Do you want to repent? All right, I'll go back now. As she spoke, she turned around and walked away with a simple and graceful movement. The sword eyebrows of Ming Wang, pushed by Yu Xiao, furrowed slightly. Yu Guang glanced at the people who were probing around the corner and spoke in a cold voice. Let her in, if not, she will also be my queen. On the day of our wedding, she will go home. Where will I put my face? The guard at the door glanced at each other, withdrew his spear, and bowed his head to admit his mistake. Yes, the princess, please. Lan Shuang raised her eyebrows slightly and gave a meaningful glance at Ming Wang. She turned around and strode into the room, truly deserving of Ming Wang's ability to perform. Ming Wang walked to the steps in a wheelchair, and immediately someone set up a wooden board. Yu Xiao pushed Ming Wang up the board and slid up the steps. Send the queen back to her bridal chamber, and I will entertain the guests. Yes. Yu Xiao gave a glance to the people following behind him, and immediately a maid approached, saying, Princess, please follow me. Lan Shuang nodded and said, Hmm. Not a single glance was given to Ming Wang, and he looked extremely indifferent. Ming Wang ignored her and went directly to the front hall, with two big characters written on their backs. Unfamiliar. The people hiding in the distance watching the commotion shook their heads and gossiped, sure enough, Princess Ming married reluctantly, and she didn't like her either. In the future, there will be some trouble. A middle-aged woman grabbed a handful of melon seeds in her hand and kowtowed while saying, Pooh, what are you talking about? I see Princess Ming, such a beautiful woman. The prince spends his days together under the eaves, how could he not be moved? Shu, Aunt Wu, you still don't understand. Ming Wang's limp is not just two legs. He likes it but can't move. What's the use of it? I'm afraid he'll get even more angry the more he looks at it. The carefree street wanderer was full of vulgar language, frowning and winking at the people around him. The other men also burst into laughter, with a rather vulgar connotation. Wu Anti kicked him and said, You donkey egg thing, all sorts of nonsense jumps out. With so many people listening, you're not afraid to hear it in the ears of the prince. I'll chop off your dog head tomorrow. Upon hearing this, the person's face really changed, remembering the ominous name of the Ming king. They looked at each other and eventually fell silent. Even if you give him three points, what kind of thing do you dare to talk nonsense about? It's really not worth it. Mrs. Wu left cursing and cursing. The others ignored themselves and dispersed, while the scouts who were among them quietly left. Although the preparation for the Ming Wang wedding was perfunctory, this bridal chamber still looks quite like that. The dragon and phoenix joyful candle quietly burned, and the orange light scattered throughout the room making it look warm and fragrant. There was also a faint fragrance of pepper floating inside. At this time, it is early autumn. Although the weather is not cold, it is cool at night and the temperature in the room is just right. Bai Qing supported Lan Shuang and sat down by the bed, looking depressed as she said, Mississippi Princess, can I help you untie your hand? Lan Shuang looked around and had a panoramic view of the layout of the room before saying, no need. Beaching. Ah. Is it tied up for the night? Is this too beastly? However, 
before she could scold the eighteen generations of Ming Wang's ancestors in her heart, she heard a piercing sound and the fabric tore apart. Bai Qing. Dot. Lan Shuang moved her wrist and neck, saying dissatisfied, this phoenix crown is too heavy. Can you help me remove it? Wang, princess, your hands. Bai Qing still hadn't regained her senses, and Lan Shuang raised her wrist in surprise as she looked at her. Are you talking about this? Ying Ying's two white wrists turned slightly red, indicating that they had been tied too tightly before. Lan Shuang picked up the broken handkerchief from behind, got up, and threw it into the incense burner. I'm just stronger, she said beaching. Oh. She followed Lan Shuang to the dressing mirror, and Lan Shuang sat down and smiled at her, saying, don't be so nervous. If you come, take it easy. Ming Wang doesn't want me to die yet. Bai Qing. Dot. Have you not been comforted at all, okay? She bit her lower lip tightly and her eyes turned red. Princess, you said you ran away and came back for what? I'm not afraid of death, and even if I kill you, I won't reveal the princess. Lan Shuang's smile faded from her lips, and she turned around from the small stool to look at Bai Qing. Her expression was slightly cold, with a warning in her eyes. Don't bring up this matter again in the future. Now that I am the Ming princess, besides that, everything else has nothing to do with me. Bai Qing became anxious and said, but since Ming Wang is not a good match for a queen, are you willing to take care of a notorious cripple for the rest of your life? Lan Shuang's eyes lit up, and her gaze swept over the door panel. She raised her hand and slapped Bai Qing. With a loud, pa, sound, it didn't hurt much, but Lan Shuang used skillful force. However, even so, it still left Bai Qing confused, and even the maid guarding the door was heartbroken. Bai Qing stared blankly at Lan Shuang, tears uncontrollably falling down, feeling wronged before anyone else. The Queen! She exclaimed in disbelief. Lan Shuang remained unmoved and said, Kneel down. Bai Qing gritted her teeth and knelt down straight, covering her hot face. Lan Shuang sat in a chair and looked down at her with a solemn tone and a tense expression. Bi Qing, we grew up together since we were young, and you treated me like a sister. I know, because I saved you once when I was a child, you have always wanted to repay me, and I remember it in my heart. Upon hearing this, Bai Qing shed tears faster. Lan Shuang said, I brought you back to the British government office with the intention of making you live a good life with me. Unexpectedly. No one in the office looks up to our master and servant, but instead, it has implicated you and me in being looked down upon together. I am sorry for you. Princess. Bai Qing couldn't hear these words, so she stepped forward on her knees and hugged Lan Shuang's leg, saying, if it weren't for the princess saving me, how could I have survived to this day? I am so grateful, how could I blame the princess? Lan Shuang closed her eyes and said, no, it's my foolishness. I was instigated to escape marriage before. Not long after I ran out, someone caught me and packed me in a sack and grass, trying to pull me out of the city. If I really followed them, the consequences would be unimaginable. Bai Qing didn't expect the truth to be like this, so she was stunned for a moment and said, how could that happen? So Lu Lang. He was bribed and deliberately approached me early in the morning, Lan Shuang slowly opened her eyes, filled with a chill, and the cool blue blue shivered. If I hadn't reacted in time and used the golden hairpin hidden in my arms to pierce through the sack and run out, it would really be over. Neither of us could have survived now. She clenched her hands tightly with a heavy tone and said, So, when we marry the prince, we have no way back. They don't want us to live, so we have to live well in the prince's mansion. In the future, let's not say that the prince is not worthy of me. As a husband and wife, no one will be humiliated and we will not be able to live well. Do you understand? The last three words, Lan Shuang, accentuated her tone. Bai Qing's heart trembled and she quickly nodded, I understand. End of this chapter. 
Chapter 5 Prince, please respect yourself 5. You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 5 Prince, please respect yourself 5 Ming Wang sat behind the desk, and the gradually sinking sunset kissed Mu Yun. A bright color fell on his face, reflecting his profound silhouette, revealing a hint of strangeness. Yu Xiao almost lost his soul at a glance, quickly lowered his head and closed his mouth. Oh, did she really say that? Ming Wang rubbed the purple jade ring on his thumb, his eyes dim and unclear. Yes, the maid said that the queen was very angry at the time and slapped Bai Qing in the face. Then they spoke to Bai Qing heartily, and in the end, the master and servant hugged their heads and cried bitterly, making up. Ming Wang's fingers paused slightly, and he slowly raised his eyes. His pitch black pupils were smeared with rosy colors, hugging his head and crying bitterly. That woman started crying, Ming Wang thought for a moment, but couldn't come up with it. Her wild and fierce gaze as she confronted each other in the sedan chair reappeared before her eyes. Yu Xiao lowered his head and said, That's what they said. I haven't seen it with my own eyes, so I dare not speak recklessly. Okay, then go meet me with the king. Ming Wang stroked his sleeve and pushed the wheelchair towards the backyard. He dismissed those in the front hall who came to congratulate and have a wedding banquet. After all, not a single one was sincere, and most of them came to watch the excitement. Keeping them would also waste food. Keeping the gifts, people. Walk slowly, don't give them away. The butler Yu Heng squatted at the entrance of the warehouse with a small abacus in his hand, smiling and counting happily. After entering the backyard, Ming Wang saw the maids guarding outside, preparing to bow to him. Ming Wang's eyes were indifferent, and his index finger was raised against his thin lips, making a gesture of silence. The maid silently bowed and retreated to one side. Yu Xiao pushed Ming Wang to stop in front of the door. In the bedroom, Bai Qin was still pouring bitter water with Lan Xuan. Princess, I know you are involuntary and cannot disobey orders, but the British mansion is Long Tan, and this Ming Wang mansion is a tiger's den. You don't know how scary the rumors about Ming Wang are outside. Lan Xuan, apart from her phoenix crown, leaned on the dressing table with one hand, holding her chin and looking at her calmly, oh. What did you say? Bai Qing immediately began to learn vividly, saying, Ming Wang is the youngest brother of the Holy Emperor today. He was loved by the late emperor from birth and was skilled in both literature, strategy, and martial arts. Unfortunately, his birth mother, Lady Xian, made a mistake and was sent to the cold palace by the late emperor. Ming Wang was leading troops outside at the time, and upon hearing this relief, he rolled off his horse and was shot in the knee, severely injured. Fortunately, in the end, the battle was won. The late emperor remembered him for his meritorious deeds, and his merits and demerits were balanced, so he did not punish him. He even asked the imperial physician to treat him, but he couldn't save his life. His leg was completely disabled, and he could only spend the rest of his life with a wheelchair. Since then, the Ming king's temperament has changed greatly. After the death of the virtuous concubine, he has completely transformed into a person. If you don't like it, you'll have to kill someone. There's still some undisclosed obsession with that. Many of the beauties sent by the emperor were tortured to death, and his life is tough. He killed the first two fiancés. The more Bai Qing said she was scared, the more she said, Princess, what will you do in the future? The master and servant listening to the corner outside the door said, Dot. Ming Wang looked at Yu Xiao with a smile on his face and said with his mouth, It seems that my disguise has been quite successful. Yu Xiao. Dot. Why are you so proud? Do you think I praise you? Watching Bai Qin twitching and shedding tears again, Lan Shuang covered her mouth and helplessly said, All right, rumors are just rumors. Who saw them with their own eyes? Where is the evidence? Since there's no evidence, why believe them? Bai Qin said, You can use frog noodles and silver shoes, they are all so delicate. 
Her mouth was covered by Lan Shuang, and she couldn't speak fluently. Lan Shuang let go of her hand and stood up to walk towards the door with a graceful posture. Hearing is false, and seeing may not necessarily be true. You have to go and see it yourself. Bai Qin nodded in confusion and said, Oh, I understand. Lan Shuang walked to the door, her phoenix eyes twitching slightly, and in her heart, she said to 888, Little Ba Ba Ba, is Ming Wang eavesdropping outside? 888, yes, host. I've been listening for a while. Cut, the big man doesn't feel ashamed to listen to the corners of the wall. Lan Shuang curled her lips and smiled, suddenly having a bad idea. She walked over to the door and pretended to open it casually, oh, this room is a bit stuffy. I want to go out and get some air. Without waiting for Beeching to object, she opened the door and met the person at the door. Lan Shuang's emotions changed once, including surprise, disbelief, and confusion, before asking, Prince. What are you doing at the door? The Ming King looked at her with a faint gaze. Suddenly feeling a bit out of sync. She acted very well when she was outside, why is she acting so clumsy now? It's clear that I realized I was stealing. Ah uh, no, I deliberately came to open the door after listening openly. Even those few words were deliberately told to me, and now I'm showing this kind of artificial surprise at first glance. Why? Intentionally. This idea suddenly arose, and all the previous explanations made sense. She deliberately made a fool of herself with this look. Ming Wang wanted to laugh a bit. With such courage, is he really not afraid to kill her by himself? I have seen the queen. In a eerie silence, Yu Xiao spoke out first, breaking the awkward scene. Free of charge. Lan Xuan nodded at Yu Xiao with a smile and tentatively turned over. Please come inside, Prince. Ming Wang's gaze flickered like a dragonfly on her face for a moment before moving away and saying, hmm. Lan Shuang chuckled lightly, it's so precious to cherish words. When Bai Qin saw Ming Wang come in the room, she was so scared that she quickly knelt down and trembled, saying, I would like to pay my respects to the prince. Ming Wang lowered his gaze and glanced at her, feeling quite uninteresting. He was so timid that he dared to discuss him behind his back, not at all like her master. Get out. Ming Wang pushed his wheelchair and parked it by the bed. Bai Qing looked up at him and then at Lan Shuang. Lan Shuang nodded and whispered, Go ahead. I'm leaving, servant, said Bi Qing as she got up from the ground. Ming Wang said to Xiao, You also go down. Yes. In the bedroom, there were only this bizarre newlywed couple left. Lan Shuang watched as Ming Wang sat on the soft couch without saying a word, and was not interested in guessing what he was thinking. She took the initiative and said, Is the prince staying here tonight? Ming Wang raised his eyebrows and said, On the night of the wedding, will you let me go out and live? Isn't this what you want? Lan Shuang walked back to the bed and Sher Shiran sat down, elegantly folding one leg on top of the other, propping her elbows on top and holding her own small face with both hands, just casually looking at the Ming King. Her posture was relaxed and relaxed, as if this was really her own home. Ming Wang withdrew his gaze and lowered his long eyelashes, that's what the emperor meant, not mine. He even insulted you with me. Are you planning to just go downhill like this? Do you think it's insulting? Ming Wang found it really interesting to talk to her. She was not afraid of him at all and didn't respect him, her tone was natural. The daughter of a British commoner who falls into the countryside sounds worthless at all. Even the noble women in Kyoto don't look up to me, and the high dot ranking officials secretly joke that the British government has found a crude and despicable girl to come back, but the emperor chooses me to be your queen. Isn't that a humiliation? Lan Xuan smiled and said, No matter how you are, you are still a prince. You are more than enough to match other noble women. End of this chapter. Chapter 6 Prince, please respect yourself 6. You are listening at novel full.audio. 
Chapter 6 Prince, please respect yourself Six Ming Wang was silent for a moment, and pushed his wheelchair close to the bed. Lan Shuang still kept his face, and was quite distracted and complained to 888 Roast, Little Baba, should I say something. Ming Wang took off his mask, and this face is really beautiful. 888 rubbed his hands and said, he 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 he, this is a dangerous and charming villain character. He overthrew the emperor in the later stage, stirring up the entire court with a bloody mess and becoming a tyrant respected by everyone. However, there are also many women coming and going, which is why he is interested in this face. Lan Xuan thought deeply and said, well, such a face does have the capital to overturn sentient beings. Her bold gaze made Ming Wang feel a little uncomfortable, and she asked in a deep voice, What are you looking at? Lan Shuang said calmly, You. Me. Ming Wang squinted his eyes and pushed the wheelchair towards Lan Shuang. He leaned closer and reached out to pinch her chin, asking, Are you pretty? It looks good. Lan Shuang didn't panic at all, and even gave him a smile. Then she pulled away his hand and sighed regretfully, unfortunately, it's not the type I like. Ming Wang. Dot. He was about to be laughed at angrily. In front of your husband, you're really not afraid to die by saying things you like about others. What are you afraid of? Anyway, our engagement is just a ridiculous joke. We should get together and part ways sooner or later. Lan Shuang reached out and patted Ming Wang's shoulder, sincerely saying, Don't worry, I won't bother you. You can go marry the person you like when the time comes. Ming Wang looked at her with a smile on his face, as if distinguishing between the truth and falsehood in her words. Okay, that's what you said. Don't go back on your word, he said Lan Shuang slowly withdrew her hand and said, I should have given this to you. With four eyes facing each other, there was a faint burst of sparks, mixed with a murderous aura of swords and crossbows. The fireworks exploded and shook the Ming King's eyes. He then regained his momentum and leaned back, since you said three things during the day, I'll trust you for now. But if you violate one, I'll take your life. The tone is plain, but the more plain it is, the more dangerous it becomes. Lan Shuang nodded and said, Hmm, I remember. Ming Wang slowly extended his hand and said, since we will be under the same roof in the future, let's first make a three-chapter agreement. Before Lan Shuang could agree, he said to himself, first, without my permission, you are not allowed to step into the study for half a step. Secondly, without my permission, no physical contact with me is allowed, and of course, no one else is allowed. Thirdly, without my permission, do not bother me proactively. 888 shook his head in displeasure and said, What's going on? It's so domineering. Lan Shuang chuckled lightly and said, Anyway, I don't really want to have any extra contact with him, so I can just avoid him properly. 888, Oh, that's true. Ming Wang saw Lan Shuang looking at him with a smile, but he didn't speak. It was rare for him to realize his conscience and reflect. Hmm. He was a bit domineering, and it sounded like he was guarding against flower pickers. He coughed lightly and made up for it, of course, besides that, you are very free. You can go to other places in the royal mansion, and you can use the money in the mansion as you please. As long as it doesn't cause me any trouble, as for the people, I will have you shall bring two maids tomorrow. The one next to you is too foolish. Lan Shuang nodded and said, hmm, it's reasonable. I have one more question. You say. How do we sleep at night? Ming Wang. Dot. He paused and licked his slightly dry lips, you sleep here, I sleep in the front yard. Okay, that's settled then. Walk slowly and there won't be any delivery. Lan Shuang waved her hand at him and smiled happily. Ming Wang's eyebrows slowly furrowed, how does it feel like he has been despised? Not tonight, at least it's our wedding night. We have to pretend to be in the same room. You sleep on the bed, I sleep on the bed. After Ming Wang finished speaking, he pushed his wheelchair towards the bed. 
Lan Shuang glanced at the wide and long bed, which was more than enough to sleep on the Ming King, but there was no blanket or pillow on it. Thinking that he didn't just let himself sleep on the bed was a bit of a man's responsibility, Lan Shuang didn't mind helping him. She stood up, took a blanket and pillow from the bed, and threw them onto the bed. Ming Wang was taken aback and said, You. Lan Shuang lowered her eyebrows and eyes, helped him lay the bedding, placed the pillow upright, and patted it. Here, go to sleep, she said Ming Wang hesitated for a moment, pursed his lips, and whispered, help me up. Lan Shuang's gaze fell uncontrollably on Ming Wang's lap, and Ming Wang immediately became wary. Why? Not willing. Lan Shuang shook her head and asked 888 in her heart, is his leg really lame? 888 mercilessly revealed. False, deliberately confusing the audience. Lan Shuang. Dot. I knew the old routine in the novel. Just hold on, hold on. Lan Shuang reached out to hold on to his arm and placed it on her shoulder, lifting the person up. Ming Wang glanced at her slender arms and, without any psychological burden, pressed most of his weight onto Lan Shuang. Under pressure, Lan Shuang stumbled and accidentally stumbled onto her foot mat, causing her to become unstable. She pulled Ming Wang and his companions into the bright red bedding. Hmm. Lan Shuang is below, Ming Wang is above, almost suffocating Lan Shuang. Help. Help. Ming Wang. Dot. A moment of discomfort flashed on his face, I'm sorry. After speaking two dry words, he didn't know what to say and could only look at Lan Shuang. Lan Shuang reached out and pushed him, struggling to say, then you should get off me. Oh, Ming Wang suddenly realized and lay on the couch with his back up. Lan Shuang covered her waist and moved, hissing. She took a deep breath and then let out a low moan, it hurts, ah. It seems like she's twisted. Her delicate face was wrinkled into a ball, and her lip color seemed to have faded a lot, looking really painful. Ming Wang frowned and said, what's wrong with you? Where does it hurt? Waist. Lan Shuang supported her waist and stood up in a very eerie posture, resembling a zombie with a waist brace, tilting down to the ground. Ming Wang sat up and looked at her complexly, shall I have someone send medicine oil? No need. Lan Shuang waved her hand, I just twisted it a bit. Don't fuss about it tonight. Let's talk about it tomorrow. Maybe it'll be fine all night. Ming Wang hesitated to speak, but when he saw Lan Shuang sitting back on the bed, he swallowed his words again. It's getting late, I'm a bit tired. I'll go to bed first, and the prince will do it himself. Lan Shuang climbed onto the bed, put down the bed net, took off her coat inside, and threw it out. The bright red wedding dress fell on the ground like this. The veins on the forehead of Ming Wang suddenly jumped, and this scene was inexplicably fragrant. He lay back without saying a word, and without taking off his clothes, he slept in his clothes. Lan Shuang lay in bed silently shedding tears and said, What bad luck! Little Ba Ba Ba, do you have any ointment? 888, yes, there is, but it requires spending resentment points to exchange. 100 resentment points is worth one sticker. Lan Shuang's eyes lit up as she spoke, so how much resentment do I have now? 888 said slowly, point one zero Lan Shuang. Dot. You have the guts to say it again. 888, they didn't mean to do it either, end of this chapter. Chapter 7. Prince, please respect yourself 7. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 7 Prince, please respect yourself 7888's physical actions proved that he had the guts, and he choked his neck and said again, point one zero. Lan Shuang sat up in shock from her dying illness, and before she could even speak, she choked on herself, coughing bitterly. Cough cough cough. Ming Wang, who had never slept before, moved upon hearing the sound, lifted his eyelids, and slightly turned his face to look at the bed. The bright red tent is half covered, with a faint outline visible. 
The cough stopped and started again, and Ming Wang's extremely shaped eyebrows slowly furrowed. Did he catch a cold? But it doesn't seem easy to catch a cold in this weather, does it? He looked for a while until Lan Shuang flipped over and then closed his eyes. Lan Shuang didn't know that Ming Wang was sneaking a peek, but now her whole mind is focused on Tian Sha 888. Can you explain to me how this point one zero came about? Even if the original owner is dead, can they still fake a corpse and create resentment? So what should I do to eliminate resentment? I'll just do extra work. 888's heart and liver trembled uncontrollably. Host, please calm down and listen to my explanation. This point one zero is because I exchanged a life dot saving skill for you in a critical moment before, and you will have to spend money to use it. Lan Shuang's face twisted as she gritted her teeth and said, Are you talking about miracles with great force? 888 pairs of fingers. Yes. Lan Shuang. Dot. She was speechless, and she was also treated well by others, but these ten points still made her feel heartbroken, after all, the resentment value of the female lead has not diminished so far. Seeing her silent, 888 whispered, Dear host, do you still need any ointment? You can actually pay on credit without any resentment, and we'll pay back later. Lan Shuang. Stop, I don't hurt at all. 888. Okay. Lan Shuang lay silent, but her mind kept spinning. The original owner had been swapped by a wet nurse since birth, replacing her daughter. Therefore, Lan Yuning took her place and became the miss of the British duchy for seventeen years. If you don't know for a lifetime, it's okay. Unfortunately, something happened because Lady Guodong fell ill and was punctured. The original owner was full of anticipation and thought she was going to live a good life. In the future, she would be taken care of by her parents and elder brothers, but in the end, everyone thought she was crude and unbearable. Lan Yuning shed two tears, and they felt sorry for her. Against the backdrop of Lan Yuning's contrast, Lan Shuang's face became even more disheveled. Lan Yuning didn't want to be kicked out of the house and deliberately designed Lan Shuang to make a fool of herself in front of everyone. She then pretended to be a gentle sister and comforted her, earning her a good reputation. And the original owner was locked in the backyard and had no knowledge of anything. The more Lan Shuang thought about it, the more she felt something was wrong. She poked 888 and said, Little 88, how do I feel like this story is full of loopholes? 888 nodded and said, Well, this is a dog blood novel. Later on, the author ended up unfinished and left a bunch of holes unfilled, so there were many logical gaps. Lan Shuang. So it's a world of novels. Rebirth Literature Yeah, the female lead is Lan Yuning. I didn't show you the information before, but this is the beginning of the second one. Originally, the second one, Lan Shuang, had already died tragically, so I teleported you back to the beginning of the second one. 888's little Zheng Tai had a deep expression on her face and said, This is the way to change one's destiny against the heavens. Lan Shuang said, I see. She touched her smooth little chin with her fingers. Let me take a look at the timeline. In the first life, Lan Shuang returned to the Duke's mansion and was still unpopular. The previous plot was quite different, but later a decree granted her marriage to the Ming King as the Empress Dowager. The whole family kept it from her until the day of her wedding, and only then did they catch her in the bridal sedan chair. After Lan Shuang got married, she remained calm and devoted to the Ming King. In the end, the Ming King ascended to the throne and she became the Empress. Is that right? That's right. But due to her poor health, she passed away shortly after due to illness, and Ming Wang never married again. During this period, the British Duke was caught and executed by Ming Wang due to corruption and bribery, as well as standing in the wrong team. Lan Yuning died on the road of exile. Lan Shuang paused and said, it was also at this moment that she was reborn and came to the second life, which is now this life. According to the original plot, 
she leaked the imperial marriage to Lan Shuang in advance, and added fuel to vinegar by saying how terrifying the Ming king was. She said she would help her escape. Then on the day of the wedding, Lan Shuang fled with the so dot called Lu Lang, and Lan Yuning married him instead, using the advantages of the previous life to win over the Ming king's heart. Wait for the host, there's actually one thing you don't know. 888 looked at the information on the electronic screen and said, Ming Wang has a hidden illness and doesn't like women. Oh, men don't like women either. After getting married, it's just a decoration. What? Lan Shuang suddenly became energized. What do you mean, he hasn't driven meat in two lifetimes? 888, oh, there's no need to be so straightforward. Lan Shuang. Dot. You're so shy, it's not about you. TSK TSK TSK, I didn't see it. I looked at the appearance and nose of the Ming King, and it didn't seem like a person who couldn't do it. Lan Shuang thought of turning around and lying on her side in the direction of Ming Wang. Although she couldn't see anything, she inexplicably showed a hint of pity towards Ming Wang, but unfortunately, this face was gone. It really doesn't work. When he was on the battlefield, he was really injured and poisoned. Later, the poison on his leg was successfully forced out, and it didn't affect his walking, but the residual poison affected him and he was disabled. Lan Shuang looked at Ming Wang more strangely, Hey, I was thinking of such a beautiful man, but now I'm a sister's. She sighed and shook her head, then turned back. The Ming King on the couch frowned and opened his eyes. What is this woman really doing? After a while, I flipped over and sighed, feeling so unhappy marrying him. Lan Shuang wants to ask further questions, Ku-888 predicted her brain circuit and directly cut off contact, saying, Enter night rest mode, good night host. Hey! Don't leave, I haven't finished speaking yet, little ba ba ba. After shouting a few times without any response, Lan Shuang looked bored at the tent above her head and continued her previous thought. Lan Yuning helped Ming Wang seize power after marrying him, but then stood idly by when the Duke of England had an accident. TSK, he really raised a white-eyed wolf. At that time, Lan Shuang was designed by Lan Yuning to marry the arch-nemesis of Ming Wang, Prince Rong. Prince Rong was just using her and wanted to use her to connect with the British government, after all, this was the only daughter left in the British government at that time. Later, King Rong was defeated, and Lan Shuang was exiled along with him. On the way, she was surrounded by a group of people Lan Shuang frowned in disgust. All of this was thanks to Lan Yuning. She died tragically, but after being reborn, it was all her fault. Neurosis to eliminate the original owner's resentment value, one may have to start with Lan Yuning. Lan Shuang closed her eyes and began to formulate a series of revenge plans. Let's start by revealing her true identity. End of this chapter. Chapter 8 Prince, please respect yourself 8. You are listening at Novel Full Audio. Chapter 8 Prince, please respect yourself 8 Lan Shuang didn't know when she fell asleep last night. Anyway, when she woke up, Ming Wang was no longer there. The blanket on the bed was half lifted, as if it had been neatly arranged as before. Lan Shuang stretched lazily and woke up wanting to go to the ground, only to find something on her lap. Hmm. She lowered her head and picked it up, realizing it was a snow dot white handkerchief. Where did the handkerchief come from on the bed? 888, we had it last night. Really? I didn't pay attention. Is there anything particular about it? Lan Shuang looked around and didn't seem to have anything special. 888, ah, uh, this. Jia. Ming Wang pushed the door and entered, looking at Lan Shuang with both hands pulling on the handkerchief. Then his gaze shifted down to the handkerchief, and his expression suddenly became strange. You. That's it, you don't have to do it. After Ming Wang finished speaking, he pushed the wheelchair and entered the house. Lan Shuang blinked in confusion and said, I'll do it. What kind of hand should I do? 
888 added softly, host, I didn't finish what I just said. This is actually you and Pa. After speaking, his face turned red and he shyly covered his eyes with his hand. Lan Shuang frowned and said, What you on? Ah. She suddenly realized that on ancient wedding nights, the handkerchief used to receive a woman's falling red was called the Yuan handkerchief, because nothing happened last night, so this thing was white. No, that's not the point. She looked at this thing for a long time just now, but she was also seen by the Ming King no wonder his expression was like that just now. What a moment of social death. Lan Shuang clenched her handkerchief and wished to immediately destroy its body. 888, host, calm down. Just now, King Ming said you don't need to take action on this thing. It should still be useful. Let it go for now. Lan Shuang snorted low and placed the handkerchief on the table. Ming Wang sat in front of the bed with a deep gaze and said, Today I will go back to the front yard to stay. If you don't like the decorations here, you can find the butler to change them. You don't need to enter the palace later. I will thank you and you will recognize people in the mansion. Okay, no problem. Lan Shuang sat down at the table and said, Can someone come in now to change the water? The Ming King nodded and said, Take it easy. After finishing speaking, he didn't leave and sat there, with Lan Shuang giving him a puzzled look. Without waiting for her to ask, suddenly someone knocked on the door and said, I would like to pay my respects to the prince and queen. I have come to collect the Yuan handkerchief. Lan Shuang suddenly realized that the performance had started early in the morning, so she had to cooperate with him well and pretend to be at odds. The emperor cannot see that Ming Wang is good. If he falls in love with Ming Wang, won't he become a thorn in his side? She cleared her throat and raised her voice, saying, In. As the words fell, a grandmother dressed in dark brown palace attire walked in, bowed to her and Ming Wang, and her gaze fell on the bed. She didn't see what she wanted and was slightly stunned. Lan Shuang pinched the Yuan handkerchief and said, Here it is. The mother was surprised and said, This. How good it is for the Empress Dowager of Labor. Anyway, I haven't used it before. It's very clean. Take it. Yes. When the nanny reached out to take it, her eyes were complex and sympathetic. TSK TSK TSK, on the night of the wedding, there was nothing to do. Isn't this just a joke in Kyoto? Ming Wang is really ruthless. How could such a beautiful woman, as beautiful as flowers and jade, still hold back? She sighed silently and looked at Lan Shuang with pity. She put the handkerchief into the wooden box, closed the lid, and looked at the silent Ming Wang sitting in front of the bed, looking at this iceberg-like face. Alas, they are all poor people. How will they live their future? She bowed to King Ming and said, I'm leaving. Ming Wang didn't even lift his eyelids, hmm. Grandma hurriedly escaped from the bedroom and met with Yu Xiao and Bai Qing without saying anything. She hurriedly left. Bi Qing frowned in confusion and said, Did the fire burn her buttocks? Is it so urgent? Yu Xiao glanced at her without saying a word, knocked on the door and got permission before entering. He didn't dare to look around and walked up to Ming Wang, saying, Prince, it's time to change clothes. Well, let's go. Ming Wang sat in a wheelchair, and Yu Xiao pushed him out. As he passed by Lan Shuang, she waved her hand at them and said, Walk slowly. Yu Xiao's eyebrows twitched, and the queen was really lively. After Bai Qing and others left, they came in with a tray. They changed a pot of tea for Lan Shuang and put some dishes of dim sum on it. Lan Shuang could drink water. Afterwards, breakfast was brought to the kitchen, and after Lan Shuang washed and changed clothes, she ate and drank enough and began to wait quietly. In less than half an hour, Lan Shuang saw a man wearing a willow leaf blue robe slowly approaching from a distance, followed by a group of people from behind. Bi Qing was surprised and said, How could there be a man in the backyard? Lan Shuang remained calm compared to her and squinted for a moment before saying, 
he should be the steward of the royal family. Ah! So young! Bai Qin turned to look at the person getting closer and closer in disbelief, and she looks too. Too delicate. She doesn't have so many words to praise people, she only knows that elegance is used to praise people for their beauty, so she used them that way. But in Lan Shuang's eyes, the description of the person in front of her as male and female is quite similar. Handsome and somewhat feminine. If you change into a new outfit and dress up as a woman, it's not impossible. Unlike Ming Wan, although he is also very handsome, his facial features are deep and three-dot-dimensional, and his lines are firm and imposing at first glance. This person looks smiling and doesn't have much temper, but Lan Shuang's intuition is that this is also a tough character. I, Yu Heng, have met the Empress Dowager. Yu Heng. Lan Shuang raised her eyebrows, what is your relationship with Yu Xiao next to the prince? It's okay. Yu Heng smiled and said, so the surname given by the prince, we all have the surname Yu. I see. Lan Shuang didn't ask why she was given the surname Yu, even if it was Chao, it had nothing to do with her. Are these the only people in the Wang mansion? Lan Shuang glanced behind him, and the maids and servants were divided into two rows, one in a row. Yes, the prince is violent and bloodthirsty, so there won't be many people in the mansion. Yu Heng spoke with warmth and softness, but the meaning in his words was really unpleasant. Who are you scaring? Lan Shuang's face remained unchanged, and there was even a hint of a smile on her face. What about the maid that the prince asked you to find for me? Yu Heng didn't expect Lan Shuang to have this reaction, and a hint of playfulness appeared in his eyes. He turned around and ordered two people to come out. Yu Enfei and Yen Ming, these two maids are clever and skillful. What does the queen think? Lan Shuang looked up and swept away. These two people looked sixteen or seventeen years old, so tender that they seemed to be able to squeeze water. They looked delicate and gentle, and their eyes thought they were hiding well, but in fact, they were both ambitious. She suddenly lowered her face and said, It's not much, change. She stood up and walked out, looked around on the steps, and casually pointed at two maids, saying, You. And you, what's your name? The two of them exchanged a glance and walked out in response. My servant's pillow is cold. The servant's sleeping fragrance. Pillow cold, sleep fragrant, these two beautiful names are yours. From now on, you will stay in my courtyard as maids. Empress Xie. Both maids are very happy. Yu Heng was surprised, how could she so accurately choose the two safest ones? Isn't kite flying and goose crowing pleasing to the queen? he asked tentatively. Lan Shuang didn't say a word, but as she turned around, she gave him a meaningful glance and even raised her eyebrows, as if saying, with your little bit of caution, do you still want to show off in front of me? End of this chapter. Chapter 9 Prince, please respect yourself 9. You are listening at Novel Full Audio. Chapter 9 Prince, Please respect yourself Nine Yu Heng suddenly felt that his careful thoughts had nowhere to hide, a bit awkward, but quickly returned to normal, and his gaze towards Lan Shuang was different. This princess is not simple. Lan Shuang threw down the gaze and turned around, leaving a mysterious and proud figure for Yu Heng and the others. Leaving aside the fact that the eyes of those two maids couldn't hide from Lan Shuang, who had read countless people, she still had the cheat 888. She just asked, who is trustworthy? 888, the third one from the left and the fourth one from the right, one named Zhen Han and the other named Mian Xiang, are from the Ming dynasty and have some martial arts skills. However, Yu Hengxuan's two pieces were carefully crafted by someone else. So Lan Shuang ordered pillow cold and sleep fragrance. But she definitely won't tell Yu Heng, just let him maintain a little respect for himself. After entering, Lan Shuang said to Bai Qing, close the door and see off the guests. Bai Qing leaned forward and said, yes. She walked over to the door and gave a glance to Zhen Han and Mian Xiang, and the two of them stood guard at the door. 
As the door was about to close, Yu Heng quickly reached out his hand and said, Hey, wait a moment, princess. Lan Xuan sat at the table, picked up the tea cup and took a sip without lifting her eyelids. Is there anything else? With a wave of his hand behind Yu Hengchong, someone immediately approached with a tray of account books. Yu Heng smiled and said, These are the accounts of the royal family. Please have the queen take a look. Lan Xuan said to 888, Look, you've come to test me again. It's really tiring to talk to someone with 800 ulterior motives like this. 888, is that mainly for the night? Since Ming Wang has the ability to rebel, he should be quite wealthy, right? Am I such a financial fanatic? Lan Shuang was dissatisfied and spoke with righteousness. 888 immediately apologized and said, Yes, I was thinking too narrowly. Lan Shuang looked at Yu Heng, glanced at the piled up ledger, paused for a moment, and said, Hmm, how much does it cost to be so thick? No need, the accounts of the Wang mansion have nothing to do with me. I'm not interested. Whoever used to be in charge of you will still be in charge. Just give me my monthly salary on time. Please leave. Yu Heng. Dot. Bai Qing saw him speechless and raised her hand to close the door. Yu Heng said, Dot. He furrowed his eyebrows fiercely. What's wrong with this person? Indulge oneself in pursuit of capture. After reading for a while without an answer, he turned around and waved his hand to the others, saying, Let's go. In the future, we will serve the queen with care and not neglect her. Yes. Yu Heng walked back with great strides, intending to wait for Ming Wang to come back and talk to him carefully. At this moment, the Ming Wang he was muttering about had just entered the palace and was carried all the way to the harem before being helped down by Yu Xiao and sitting in a wheelchair. The eunuch Lu Yuan who was greeted outside showed a look of pity in his eyes. Prince, be careful. I'll push you in, right? Ming Wang said in a deep voice, no need. Yu Xiao pushed him into the main hall. The emperor and empress sat at the top, while the princes and daughters sat below. They heard the sound of wheelchairs rolling and looked up one after another. Those gazes were diverse, mostly falling on the legs of the Ming King. Ming Wang didn't squint, so he pretended not to see it. When he went out, he put on the mask again. It is said that Wang not only injured his legs during the war, but also lost his face, leaving indelible scars, so he wore a mask to cover it up. This further contributes to his terrifying reputation. The emperor was quite satisfied with his ghostly appearance. He was dressed in a semi-new and timeless crescent white robe, wrapped in a lifeless person, perfect match. However, he was accustomed to putting on airs. When he saw the arrival of the Ming King, he quickly put on a concerned expression and said, Ninth brother, you're here. We only got married yesterday, why don't you dress up as a festive occasion? The Empress also agreed, yes, and why is only the ninth brother here? Where is your queen? She even took a special look behind the Ming King. Ming Wang's exposed lips were pursed into a straight line, and two words of displeasure were engraved in his eyes without any concealment. She's sick and can't get up. The emperor and empress exchanged a glance and said, Are you sick? The Ming King impatiently said, Hmm, my younger brother, thank you for your kindness in marrying me. However, this princess is truly vulgar, and I really don't like her. Thinking of the clean yuan handkerchief that my grandmother had sent me before, and looking at the expression on Ming Wang's face, the emperor's heart finally calmed down. It seems that he really doesn't like it. That's good, that's good. He earnestly advised, Old Jiu, she is at least the princess you married openly. Although she is a bit simple, she looks first dot class and her family background matches yours. You can endure it. After a while, you may feel good about her. Emotions are all about getting along. Yeah, one day a hundred days of kindness between husband and wife. In the future, more people will take care of you and accompany you to talk heartfelt words. 
This palace and the emperor can also rest assured. Ming Wang sneered repeatedly in his heart, unable to show affection, so he decided to break the jar and throw it. Humph, I can't possibly have a crush on that mountain and wild village woman in my lifetime. The emperor and empress should not advise again, so as not to hurt our relationship. He clenched the armrest of the wheelchair tightly, and veins bulging on the back of his hand. The emperor glanced at it and felt even more relieved in his heart. Ah, you, okay. If you're not satisfied, I'll find a few more for you in the future. After finishing speaking, he dragged him on and on, saying a bunch of brotherly and respectful words. To outsiders who were unaware, they thought they really had a deep brotherly relationship. When Ming Wang's patience reached its peak, the emperor pretended to leave him in the palace for a meal. Ming Wang immediately pretended that he had not rested well last night and wanted to go back. The emperor empathetically followed him and also gave him a lot of medicinal herbs and tea, as well as some silk jewelry for Lan Shuang. At least face is worth it. Lan Shuang was originally reading a notebook, but when the emperor's reward came like water, she lazily stood up and leaned against the door, saying, Who gave it? Your Majesty. Yu Xiao pushed Ming Wang in, and upon hearing this, Ming Wang nodded and said, I have someone bring your portion. Thank you. Lan Shuang became a little interested and reached out to touch the shimmering material, which was smooth and cool. Tisk, isn't the emperor in a good mood? Well, please advise me to have a good time with you. Ming Wang said this sentence with unclear meaning. Lan Shuang raised her eyebrows and said, It seems you did a good job. Ming Wang's thin lips curved slightly and said, This is each other. Lan Shuang chuckled lightly and said, When I return to the door in those three days, will I go back by myself? Do you still want me to accompany you? Ming Wang retorted. It's not impossible, I want to borrow the prince's tiger power. Lan Shuang smiled and bent her eyes. At first glance, she looked quite like a fox. The fox pretends to be tiger-like. Who do you want to scare? A hint of interest appeared in King Ming's eyes. Lan Shuang's fingertips brushed over the silk, her long eyelashes drooping low, her red lips lightly curling, and her voice seemed to be tinged with honey. It sounded sweet and pleasant, of course it was. My good sister who encouraged me to escape marriage. Ming Wang looked at her calmly and said, Is that right? The prince doesn't believe it. Lan Shuang's gaze slowly fell on his mask, then moved down and fixed on his thin lips, hesitating for a moment before moving away. Follow me tomorrow and you'll know. End of this chapter Chapter 10 Prince, please respect 10. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 10 Prince, please respect 10 After saying thank you, Lan Shuang and Ming Wang returned to their room. Leaving Ming Wang sitting in a daze, lost in thought. Yu Xiao asked in a low voice, Prince, where are you going next? No one answered. Yu Xiao looked down at Ming Wang in confusion and said, Prince. No one answered yet. Prince. Hmm. Yu Xiao raised his volume, and this time Ming Wang finally came to his senses. Where is the prince going? Go back to the study. Yes. Yu Xiao pushed Ming Wang to turn around and walk back, but Ming Wang turned around and glanced. Lan Shuang. What were you looking at just now? He rubbed his lips, feeling lost in thought. The life of the ancients was quite dull, especially for women from wealthy families who were bound by various constraints and could not do what they wanted to do as they pleased. They could only nestle in that piece of land. Lan Shuang felt bored after a day, but fortunately, she could still tease Xiao Ba Ba to relieve her boredom. Finally enduring until it was dark, I used my dinner pillow and suddenly brought her a bowl of pear soup. Lan Shuang was taken aback and looked at the clear soup color in the white porcelain cup, then at the peeled and crystal clear pear flesh. She asked in confusion, I didn't say I wanted to drink pear soup. Zhen Han said, the people in the kitchen said it was ordered by the prince. Prince. 
Lan Shuang couldn't understand, well behaved. What does Ming Wang mean by giving her pear soup? Are you going to leave her? 888, who saw through everything, touched his chin and pretended to be deep, saying, if I'm not mistaken, it must have been last night when you choked on your saliva and coughed so hard that Ming Wang mistakenly thought you were sick. Pear soup moistens your lungs and throat. Lan Shuang. Dot. Wait. So he didn't even sleep at the time. Lan Shuang suddenly felt her heart beating a bit too fast. Yeah, what's wrong? Why didn't you tell me? 888 was puzzled and said, I don't think there's anything to say, so I didn't say. He spoke softly with a lack of confidence. Lan Shuang. Fortunately, I didn't do anything strange last night, otherwise I would have really lost my life. 888, oh my, the host can rest assured. If you really do something that shouldn't be done, I will definitely remind you in advance. Lan Shuang. He he. At that time, everyone got cold, okay. She wouldn't tell 888, she once wanted to get up close and see the features of the Ming King. She has nothing wrong with her, just being lascivious. Cough, the prince has a heart, give it to me. Lan Shuang's face softened and she pretended to cough, taking small sips of pear soup and drinking it. Actually, she doesn't really like to drink pear soup. She prefers to eat a pear directly. But at least it's a bit of goodwill from the Ming King, so we still need to appreciate it. Lan Shuang chewed on the flesh of the fruit and said to Xiao Baba in her mind, actually, Ming Wang is quite a good person. He is not as unpredictable as mentioned in the original work, and he is quite careful. Upon hearing her say this, 888 waved her hand in a lingering shadow and said, No, 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 no. Lan Shuang. Are your lips going crazy? 888, no, Ming Wang's personality is half faked and half tormented by poisonous hair. Poisonous hair. Lan Shuang was taken aback and her hand stopped. He was poisoned. When did it happen? It's not in the plot you gave me. 888, um, this. Was the situation quite urgent at the time, so I only gave you the main plot and didn't mention some minor details. After all, your mission was mainly on the family of the British government. Stop, don't sell cuteness, quickly explain it to me. Oh, good. 888 added, actually, at the beginning, the relationship between the emperor and the Ming king was very good. The Ming king believed in the emperor very much because at that time, the virtuous concubine was sent to the cold palace, and only the emperor knelt outside the imperial study to plead for mercy for the virtuous concubine and the Ming king, almost fainting. The Ming king has always remembered this kindness. Wait a moment, let me guess. Based on the degree of dog blood in this novel, is it possible that the matter of the virtuous consort was planned by the emperor and his mother? It was also him who caused the defeat of the Ming king on the battlefield. 888 worshipped rubbing little hands. The host is really smart. That's it, but the Ming king at that time didn't know. He brought his troops back and immersed himself in the grief and despair of his mother being sent to the cold palace, while reciting the emperor's kindness and going to see him. Isn't it the emperor who took the opportunity to poison him? The more Lan Shuang thought about it, the more likely she felt it was. Yeah, at that time, Ming Wang was not on guard against him, so the emperor gave him a colorless and tasteless poison in his tea. The poison was extremely rare, and there was no obvious problem in the short term. Over time, it would accumulate in his body, making him increasingly irritable, unable to control his temper, and eventually becoming a complete madman. 888 shuddered as he spoke, what a wicked thought. Later, Ming Wang realized something was wrong and found his trusted physician. He went to the capital to investigate and found himself poisoned. However, at this point, the poison had penetrated deep into the bone marrow, making it even more difficult to completely remove it. He kept using temporary antidote to suppress it. Lan Shuang pressed the soft and rotten pear flesh with a spoon, 
her eyes dim as she said, the royal family has always been in turmoil. Either you die or I die. Without this arrangement, how can Ming Wang rise up and resist? 888 sighed and said, so Ming Wang is also quite miserable for a man. His mother died, his father didn't like him, and his imperial brother planned to frame him. He was poisoned and didn't take action. He won't have any offspring in this life, and the wife he married is not someone he likes. He paused and clenched his little fist in indignation, saying, even in the end, this book didn't have a big ending. Lan Shuang was still saddened by the tragic background of Ming Wang until she heard the last sentence. She suddenly broke her kung fu. Cough 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 cough, forget it. Don't bother about that. Let's finish our task first. It's a big deal that I will care more about him later. Everyone is a sister's. 888. Dot. Perhaps your sister's herself is unwilling to claim this title. Lan Shuang slowly finished drinking the pear soup and turned to Zhen Han, saying, Go ahead and thank the prince for me. Yes. The next morning, Lan Shuang finished grooming and was eating when Ming Wang was pushed by Yu Xiao, followed by Yu Heng. Why did the prince come over at this time? Have you eaten it yet? Lan Shuang smiled at Ming Wang and continued to eat. Ming Wang nodded and said, I've eaten it. Yu Heng added on the side, the prince is not in good health and has never eaten much in the morning. Ming Wang. Dot. He glanced at Yu Heng, who immediately lowered his head and pretended to be dead. Lan Shuang was surprised and said, Ah. That's just right. I can't finish all this food. Let's join the prince. Ming Wang rubbed his fingers on the armrest without speaking, as if thinking. Lan Shuang made a decision for him directly, took a clean plate and gave him two steamed buns and half a bowl of bean curd jelly served with sauce. At least eat some. Not eating in the morning will leave you feeling lethargic all day, and it's even worse for your health. Ming Wang looked at her bright eyes and paused, hmm. End of this chapter